Hi everyone, it's Simon from Higher Plane Games with a review of Wizards Tawny. Wizards Tawny is a 1 to 4 player mini game collection that's available on PlayStation 4 as you see on your screen and PC as well. Apologies, my voice is very, very croaky. Um, I'm recovering from a cold, so I hope that doesn't put you off too much. Uh, Wizards Tawny has a shared controller scheme, so if you've only got two controllers, you can still play for up to four players, which is great. The option's hidden in the menu. Um, so you just need to kind of find it and switch it on and what it, what it does is it means that you'll control uh, one wizard with one of the analog sticks and the other player will control the wizard with their other analog stick and then you'll have the two shoulder buttons as like your trigger moves for either like jumping or throwing a spell or performing an action for the mini game that you're playing with. Now the level, there's I think seven, possibly eight mini games in this uh, game of Wizards Tawny, which is quite small, but each of the mini games is kind of real well formed into its own um, game with its own mechanics, uh, and they're quite meaty. Sometimes these mini game collections all have the same type of thing and just kind of change the theming. Here, it's genuinely different games as you play, and I really appreciate that. The overarching structure of a game of Wizards Tawny is that you'll select whether or not you want to battle to one, two or three rounds of a type of mini game. Whoever then gets to one, two or three wins, depending on what you choose, that mini game then comes to an end and you'll be randomly selected into the next one as you go around. At the end of a, um, a certain amount of games, whoever then gets the most amount of medals across that time period then wins the tournament and is the top wizard um, and usually gets you a trophy for that to be fair. Um, the games themselves, as I said before, have all got their own mechanics and I'll briefly run through most of them as I go along. Um, what I really found with Wizards Tawny though is that if you play the game straight and focus on what you're doing, quite a lot of the mini games can come across quite dull. Um, where Wizards Tawny comes into its own is if you want to start menacing and meddling in other people's business. And uh, although that doesn't actually help you in any way, shape or form quite often, what you're doing is stopping someone else get to a point um, or win a point or win a medal and you need to do a balancing act essentially of hindering other people while still pursuing your own progress. Um, but if everyone just goes after their own progress, then you miss a massive section of the game. So you just need to make sure that your audience and the people that you're going to play with are aware that they can muck up everyone else's world as well. Because otherwise, Wizards Tawny will be quite boring for you. I just want to put that out there. Um, because I've had it with different people where everyone's just gone off and like... Uh, one of the mini games is called uh, Potion Pot, I think. And you all have your own cauldron. You've got your colour of um, ingredients that you need to pour into the cauldron. And I played it with different friends. And the first set of friends all just ran out got their uh, colours, ran back in, and no one fiddled with anyone else's cauldron. However, there is loads of different power-up uh, potion ingredients that will let you change someone into a sheep, or reverse someone's controls, or will make um, the colours change in all of the cauldrons, which will then bugger up what everyone's doing. So it doesn't just become a race against time, you're having to juggle some things as well, or deal with problems. However, if you don't like muck about with it, then you're missing part of the action. So it's just making sure that you've you've got everything and done everything properly um, and explored all of the options. So that's like one of the uh, mini games. Another one is where you've got to stack blocks onto, a sh onto uh, platforms. And if you're able to get all three blocks on the platform of your own color, then you win like double points essentially. But if not, then you'll just score like the amount of points per box that you manage to get into that trio however what you can then start doing is zapping a spell to like blast someone else's block off the side so that you can kind of work together in pairs um, against other people if you want and it can end up being quite a long mini game because no one can agree on the, like what the stack of boxes should be and you have to be quite sneaky Again, working against each other is um, in a lava pit with a dragon who's busy breathing fire and you need to steal its eggs and put it back in the egg basket at the end of the level. You'll be hiding behind um, randomly generated um, rocks that will pull out of the ground so that you can uh, basically defend from the dragon that's constantly breathing fire. 
but all of the other wizards can collect spells. So if you pick up an egg and you're hiding and you're making your way to the end, another wizard can just come along and zap a spell. So you've got to have eyes all around you to make sure that other people aren't trying to stop you from getting a point because they can't currently get one because they might have already dropped their egg, for example, and they're busy to go back and get a replacement. So there's a lot to have uh, with fun there. Another one that I really like is the um, Halloween themed one where you've got to put on a pumpkin head and basically be chased around by everyone. Um, whilst you've got the pumpkin head on, you will collect points. So it's almost like um, a tag game where you've got something you need to keep the points. However, at a certain point, the pumpkin will turn green where it's rotten and all the points that you've been added to will then start to be taken away from you. So then you need to get rid of the pumpkin. Now thankfully, those of other pumpkins that are around in the level, which you can then throw as missiles or plant as mines, depending on which type of pumpkin you pick up. And so you'll be trying to avoid everyone's uh, missiles being thrown at you, whilst either running away from everyone or chasing after everyone, depending on what pumpkin you've got on at the time. Um, and I really like the way how that switches up the game uh, very, very quickly. You've also got a kind of... Um, uh, I want to call it, it, it reminds me of the Crash um, the Crash Bash PS1 game with the pinball, uh, Hungry Hippos. I don't know if people remember that board game, Hungry Hungry Hippos. Uh, but it's like an electronic version of it. Um, so a, a ball of electricity will come down into the arena. You can pick it up and then quickly throw it towards your coloured goal. But you've only got a second before it electrocutes you and then you're stunned. And then someone can run in and take the ball and steal it off you. They can also throw dynamite at you as well to then just explode you um, out of the way so then they can take the ball. But because you've only got one second, you have to be very quick and very precise. And there'll be like pinball bits that will pop up in the level that might get in your way and might bash the ball off somewhere else and score someone else a point. So yeah. Um, that one's fast, furious and over very quickly, but also very good fun. Same with the laser one. There's a laser one where um, you need to collect up to 40 orbs by dodging lasers and dodging spells that everyone's throwing at you. And you can do that by collecting like a little uh, bubble that will help you um, reflect other people's spells as it goes along over very quickly but very very uh, well put together in the same way that the ice level is as well and um, there's one there's a essentially you're in an ever decreasing selection of ice blocks but there's penguins always sliding across trying to take you out and you can basically shout at the other um, wizards and try and blow them off off the map so you're trying to do that avoid the penguins and the world is shrinking so um, yeah, think of it almost, almost like a Fortnite <laughs> um, or a or a Pugba, um, but just the icicle wizard version. So yeah, my main criticism of Wizards Tawny is it just needed a few more mini games. But what's here is really really good. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for um, full price, although I did buy it at full price for PlayStation Four. Um, you would need good mileage with good friends who are going to actually play it properly, i.e. ruin it for everyone. <laughs> um, because if you don't have that kind of mindset going into this game, you'll miss half of the fun and half of the joy with it. Um, if they were able to add even just three other mini-games that are fully fleshed out, then this would be very worthwhile at a full price buy. Um, however, it kind of makes me think of back to the PlayStation 2 games where... Um, and I reference it an awful lot, Muppets Party Cruise, a superb game with 30 individual games that are of substantial levels like this, and that to me is still one of the biggest pinnacles of multiplayer minigame collections um, that's out there. Um, very few have hit that echelon. Um, and this goes some way towards it, but it's just lacking in overall content, but in doing so has a much lower price point. So I hope that was informative. Any comments or questions, please do leave them in the comments below and I do get round to everyone. Um, and I'm so sorry that I sound croaky, ill and like I've smoked a million fags a day when I've never smoked in my life. So yeah, take care all. Bye. This channel is just one of my many projects that cover games, music and film.
If you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.